Mr. Speaker. Members will recall that in May of this year, during member statements, I stood in this place and I spoke out against ultra-right-wing organisations and their public vilifications of Muslims, and in particular Muslim women wearing hijab. Um, and at that time, I made the statement about this group, which I'm not going to name again because I don't want to give them oxygen. I made the statement that groups such as these should not be allowed to exist, thrive or flourish in Western Australia. Now, if I'm to hold true to the principles that I believe in, that uh, all religious um, extremism and racial extremism has no place in Western Australia, then it's incumbent on me to speak out about an article that appeared on the front of today's Western Australia and today in this House condemn radical Islamism. Uh, we all awoke this morning to the story in the Western Australian that a person described as a controversial Muslim activist was going to be delivering a lecture at the University of Western Australia for a seminar titled The Gaza Crisis and that he belonged to a radical activist group that promotes the overthrow of Western governments and supports Australian Muslims fighting in Syria and Iraq. This to me is just as abhorrent as the radical white supremacists when I hear about radical Islam jihadists spreading their vile thoughts and, dire and directions amongst our own Muslim communities. The talkback radio airwaves were running hot with this story and there were calls from all over the place for the university to cancel this lecture and to not allow it to take place. Because a number of people at UWA know that I have a particular interest in this area, they contacted me to let me know what was happening and tonight I want to put on the record the events that happened at UWA today in this regard. Universities, as we all know, are bastions of free speech and whilst we may not always agree with the activities that take place on campuses, we do acknowledge their right to take place. However, underpinning all of the activities that do take place on the campus of the University of Western Australia is the university's code of ethics and code of conduct. And it would have seemed to the reasonable person that some of the comments attributed to this person due to speak may be in direct contravention of these codes. However, it was not necessary for the Vice-Chancellor to take the drastic action of banning someone from speaking on campus because the University of Western Australia Muslim Students Association themselves took the necessary action and advised the university administration of their actions. I now would like to read into the record the text of a letter from Nazim Khan, the Executive Officer of the University of WA Muslim Students Association, written to Professor Paul Johnson, the Vice-Chancellor of the University, and then the Vice-Chancellor's um, emailed response, which was sent to all staff and students following the receipt of Nazim Khan's letter. Nazim Khan writes, Professor Johnson, I want to inform you that I'm cancelling the talk scheduled for this Saturday at UWA by Uthman Bada. The session was suggested by one of our trusted partners, so I did not pursue the usual due diligence. At that stage, I was not aware of who the speaker was nor his affiliation, and I have no personal connections with Mr Badar. We do not wish to damage our good standing in UWA and the goodwill we have established over several years. I apologise for any embarrassment caused to UWA and for putting the university in an uncomfortable position. I also wish to add that the MSA committee was not directly involved in organising this talk. I take full responsibility for this error of judgement. Please feel free to respond to any media questions by saying that UWA Muslim Students Association chose by its own free will to cancel this session without any pressure. I'm also happy to be contacted by the media if this is deemed appropriate and suitable. To which the Vice-Chancellor Paul Johnson replied, Dear colleagues, I am pleased to advise that the UWA Muslim Student Association has this morning advised me of its decision to cancel a planned lecture by a controversial Muslim activist. The decision which has my support follows an unfortunate story on the front page of today's Western Australian newspaper. It reported that Speaker Uthman Badar heads an organisation which promotes the overthrow of Western governments and supports young Australian Muslims fighting in Syria and Iraq. Mr Badar spoke, sparked outrage in Sydney earlier this year when he planned to give a lecture titled Honour Killings Are Morally Justified. The event had not been sanctioned or supported by me or the university. I thank the members of the association for taking decisive and appropriate action on this matter. Below is a copy of the statement I issued to the West Australian newspaper last night on the issue. The University of Western Australia has been made aware today and uh, Vice-Chancellor Paul Johnson's uh, media statement then uh, goes on. Um, 
The university expects all staff, students and visitors to the campus to adhere to the university's code of ethics and conduct. The university is committed to the principles of tolerance, equity and the appreciation of diversity. Mr Butter has been reported to hold the view that so-called honour killings are morally justified. This view is completely incompatible with the university's principles. Professor Paul Johnson, Vice-Chancellor, requires Mr Butter to give an explicit written public assurance that he is opposed to the cowardly and barbaric act of so-called honour killings in all contexts. Professor Johnson is also requesting that Mr Butter makes a public written assurance that this proposed lecture will fully comply with the university's code of ethics and code of conduct. Well, as we all know now, uh, he didn't have to seek that assurance because uh, the students themselves cancelled it. This clearly demonstrates that the UWA Muslim Students Association do not support the radical views that are held by Uthan Bada, and I congratulate them on taking this stance. But what I also want to say on this issue is that moderate Muslims and their leaders and the imams can no longer remain silent on this issue. I and my colleagues who regularly meet with and attend functions organised by the various Islamic groups here in Western Australia know full well that none of these people ascribe to the radicalism that is often highlighted in the media as portraying the way that all Muslim, Muslims feel. But we don't hear their leaders speaking out and condemning these jihadists and radical Islamists and the vile speeches that they make. Every Islamic group that I have knowledge of or interact with in Western Australia are peace-loving, true followers of Islam and are just as horrified as we are at the hatred that is promoted in the popular media as being the way that the majority of Muslims feel. This is just not true. I'm now speaking directly to all the Muslims from so many ethnic backgrounds and urging them to make their peaceful voices heard and ensure that as true Australians you all come together and speak with one voice to condemn those who would seek to harm our way of life and do harm in our communities. I know that that is not what you want, but please don't allow the radical minorities to speak louder than you. Speak out in not only your mosques and your meeting places, but in the public arena and demonstrate to your fellow Australians that whilst wanting to preserve your cultural heritage and pass that on to your children and to share these cultural heritages with your neighbours, you also condemn the actions of those here and in other parts of the world who are bringing Islam into disrepute with their misinterpretation of the Koran and trying to justify their actions in the name of Allah because they are just wrong. I congratulate the UWA Muslim Student Association for their actions and hope that this can be the beginning of a better understanding of Islam for us all.